Okay, I'm really liking this new, like, mini cam thing that I downloaded. And so I'm going to, I was just actually laughing at the comments from one of these Bernie videos that I've made. And <laughs> I'm going to um, discuss actually the comments aloud, because as I said before, I don't really care to, you know, waste my time <laughs> responding to them because they're so delusional anyway and I think it's really funny you know that I'm calling them stupid and then their their um, rebuttal is that I'm stupid but then this particular video that I'm going to read the comments from I did put a uh, caption at the bottom of it that says where it's clipped from so you can actually go look at that video because like I've been saying with uh, the observations I've been making, that particular video is the only one that actually has legitimate, um, well actually I used the Bernie Sanders clip in this one too, but because I used uh, an inflammatory or insulting um, title for the video is why I seem to get so much responses with this. So it's, it's as if um, they, the Bernie Sanders followers are looking for some way to cry victim. That's what I'm starting to to theorize here. Yeah, so anyway. Um so the content of this original video, I know this seems really redundant and silly, but I'm just gonna play it from the beginning. So this is just actually as clipped as small as I can with my from my eighteen minute description of this and the majority of this is just going off of his his actual comments about the ATM fees. the main substance of the argument. The rest of the video was actually just antagonistic, to be honest. So, if their argument is essentially with the last 40 to 50 seconds of the video, then again, they just prove my point that they're looking to be victims and they're doing this whole victimhood outcry backlash, like, we're gonna be a martyr and stick up to the bully. Blah, blah, blah. That's supposedly a Republican or something, which I never ever said that I was. <laughs> so I'm gonna read the comments now. So somebody says, Oh, oh, you, you quoted Mark Twain. I love Mark Twain. Awesome. So it is better to keep your mouth closed than to let people think that you are a fool than to open it and remove it all with and remove all doubt. Well, you did a good job of listening to your own your own advice since you didn't even say anything original. That came out of your own mouth, so touche. <laughs> and then it says, uh, the next one is, oh wow, just wow. Learn to economics. I I actually not not gonna lie, I rewatched my video before I did all this to make sure that like I didn't <laughs> say something like kind of airheadish because I do that every once in a while. I was thinking like, is he quoting me? Like learn to economics? I'm like, did I really fucking say something like that? Then I realized I didn't, so I'm wondering if he's stupid or if that's supposed to be some sort of condescending thing about me being stupid, even though 
I didn't really say anything stupid because I was just making commentary on things that Bernie Sanders said in a clip that I clipped in the beginning. And the fact that, you know, obviously these people all, you know, work for corporate jobs or bitch about corporations fucking them over because they don't ever, you know, maybe open up their own business to find out exactly what goes into needing some of those credit card, debit card machines or ATM machines. And I'm talking about the actual stations and the little handheld ones that you see at little small business stores. And then the next one says, I think you're very ill-informed. Fees are the one thing only to make the backs more money. Wait, fees are for one thing only to make the backs more money. Oh, I work two jobs, an uh, average of 60 to 70 a week. Well, there's a reason why you work two jobs, because... Yeah, the, I work two jobs, a average of 60, 70 a week, so I would say I have work ethic. Yeah, I still... Oh, there's read more. Okay. Support Bernie Sanders for president. Bernie for president. So then it goes back to the whole theory that he wants to boost up to $15 an hour, but he blatantly admits that he's going to have to, in, in order to implement the, the one-pay system for healthcare, as well as, well actually he didn't say about the healthcare, but he said about the tuition for, for college. He says in order for the tuition for college to be available for every American, that he's going to have to tax everyone. And there is actually another video that I could reference um, where somebody was doing, you know, like the basics for the math. So, but I guess somebody else tried to do it for me. So then somebody says, your videos are a joke. Wah ha 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 ha. I think that person already posted a comment. No, no, that was somebody who posted, he posted on another video, which is further proving my, the point of what I'm getting at with all these videos here. So then somebody says, girl, study this a bit harder. Look at the other developed countries around this world. You mean the ones that are burning to the ground right now? I mean, if you're on YouTube, I'm sure you see it. Or the ones that are um, now being completely taken over because of all their social services that they offer for free. And it's like, I'm from Denmark and I can tell you the minimum wage there is $20 an hour. If you're from Denmark, please, you might want to go back and check on your family because I think they're all being raped right now. <laughs> so, you know, and then it says, American middle class have less money. And it's like, and also, by the way, um, I actually had a foreign exchange student friend in high school that was from Denmark also. And yes, there are some great things about Denmark, but again, the argument stands that you cannot compare demographics, popul populace, different resources, and the health overall, and the, in the industries that are booming in each developed country to one another, and then say that all of them couldn't basically follow the same policies because everything is different. That's the whole point of being American also, by the way. Then somebody says, lady, no offense, but I think your time would be better spent cleaning up that room. Please stay away from talking about things you clearly don't understand. What part of my room are you looking at? Oh. Yeah, I, I hang my towels over there. You know, to conserve power and energy, you know? I just hang them dry right there. And that's an inversion table back there. And yeah, then, you know, some hooks on the wall, have a bunch of coats. You know, I live somewhere where it's pretty cold. That's pretty much all I got right there. And if anything, maybe you might have seen like down there, I have a little bin that has recyclables because I recycle because I care about the earth and stuff. Well, that's for, that's not besides the point, boo. What I'm getting at is that, you know, people that keep reiterating that I'm Republican or, you know, anti-progressive kind of thing. <laughs> I don't want to even insinuate that I'm anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't, I don't really know what, what they're getting at with the whole thing. I mean, if you could please poke holes in my argument, that'd be great. And then somebody says, I've worked for the bank for 10 years. Those fees aren't there for any reason except for the banks to make money, period. Okay. 
I'm not saying that the banks don't apply fees, okay? That's why most banks like Wells Fargo or Chase, they have minimum fees per month for you to actually possess a checking account with them and the checks aren't free. That's not what is being discussed here. He's talking about ATM machines, literal machines that when you go to like a 7-Eleven and like for some reason their debit card machine doesn't work and you go, oh, well crap, I really need that. And you go to the ATM machine and it says, will you accept the $2 fee for this transaction? And you say, yes. And do you know why? Because that machine there is not charity. That machine is not Oh, supervised by the people who own or or run that 7-eleven that is run by a individual company that has all those armored cars with the money they have to pay that individual to get into his car drive to all these locations that have these independent ATM machines he has to then load them up or distribute the money or whatever he has to do he has to take some out however they have to do it Usually he does that with uh, different businesses that also need to deposit things. So he usually just needs to put money into it. And then also, for usually those particular businesses, they have to pay to actually have that machine there. Or they get paid, uh, they, they get charged by the banks themselves for even having it there for per transaction. So... That I know applies specifically to like the little handheld ones that you see like at smoke shops or like little, you know, novelty stores that, you know, aren't big box corporate stores that you guys probably work for, hence why you're having issues with minimum wage things and why somebody said they work 60 to 70 hours a week, two hour, uh, two jobs, because they are either forced to or they choose to work for a corporate that is cutting them below the knees and screwing them over which they're one and the same with the banks but what I'm saying is that if you cap off that fee for that little ATM withdrawal say you know he break he he brings the fee down and the fee still exists for the vendor or the actual business that has that ATM but they need it because then all of a sudden every single person who comes in and says hi yeah so I'd like to buy that and then they go to hand them their debit card go oh I'm sorry my business, we just can't afford it in our budget to have the, the debit machine anymore. I'm sorry about that. Um, I think that there's an ATM five blocks down because the other businesses around here, they, they can't afford the ATM either because the bank keeps charging us those, uh, those per swipe fees. So um, since there's a cap on it, there's no way that we're, we can ever recoup the costs of all those fees and then uh, not being able to make any profit off of it. I'm sorry. I was like, we're just going to have to take cash only. So <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. And that's what you guys aren't seeing. And again, because you guys are Bernie Sanders supporters and you, you align with the concerns that he's addressing, which I'm not saying that they're not concerns or valid things to address. But what I'm saying is that the way that he wants to remedy these issues is naive. And you guys are equally naive and ignorant for believing him. So somebody says, this is embarrassing, embarrassingly misinformed. I've never faced palms so hard. Neither have I. Because people I know have been talking about how stupid Bernie Sanders supporters are and I almost I actually originally made this video to try to talk some my first video to talk some sense to my friend and for like therapeutic vlog reasons and then when I started getting comments like this I I actually made it another one because I I I tried to give you guys the benefit of the doubt that I didn't believe that you guys were this stupid but apparently I was wrong <laughs> 